My name is Brad Flickinger and I teach technology at uh, Bethke Elementary here in Northern Colorado. And today I want to attempt to try to explain the badge program I want to instigate this year. I did demo it a little bit with 20 students last year. It was very successful, worked out great, but now I want to take it into the mainstream uh, student body of my school. So let me just try to explain it. it it's, I'm, I'm very visual, so I'm going to draw it on the whiteboard and I only have 10 minutes to be able to do it. So uh, let's get started, okay. So my first thing about uh, these, and these are tech badges. So these are badges that the, the kids use to be able to prove competency in a tech skill. And that's really important. And, and if you've read anything about the Open Badge Project or anything, you understand that's what it's all about, is proving competency, and then you earn the badge for it. But in those things, they, they have very uh, digital badges where I want to use physical badges. Okay, so uh, here's how it starts. So we, so we have a student um, that, um, I don't know, maybe it's, uh, they're in tech class. I know in my school, you know, they have, you know, they have me, a tech teacher, but other students might not have uh, a tech class in elementary. So they might be in just their regular class and they might be done their project or uh, maybe it's before or after school or at lunchtime. You know, so somehow there is some time throughout the, the week that the students can work on this. Okay, so that's, that's step one. We have students that have time to be able to do this. And then they have to go to a filter. And this filter really is, um, do the students, do they have to do uh, required, which I'm gonna put up to here. Or can they work on electives? At our school, we want to start instigating maybe Google's 80-20, where they work 80% of the time for us on these required, and then we will give them a little 20% time. I think that's important, rather than having them just work on required and until they're done all the required, then they can work on the elective, because sometimes young students don't see the end of the tunnel, and so if they just think, oh, I've got to do these forever, and I'm never gonna have a chance to work on the fun things, then they can get frustrated. For required, these are those ones that we decided, uh, what can we send, what is the most important thing to send students off into middle school with? What tech skills? So we know uh, there are things like, you know, keyboarding, uh, word processing, presentation skills, uh, online uh, safety is an, you know, is an important one, being to do online research. All those skills that, that are the non-negotiables, you have to know these things. Uh, you, you know, if they know one of these electives, like they're great at podcasting, but the kids don't know how to type, then we've not really done them a good service to send them off into middle school. So there are, there are the required ones that they're working on uh, you know, most of the time, okay? But once they have them done, or it's 20% time, and that's why I'm going to maybe do an 80, 20% thing, or they're done. So once they have those done, then they can work on the electives. And the electives really uh, have the chance to be able to be in you know, three different categories. There's novice, there is the apprentice level, And then there is the protege. And we're theming ours on Leonardo da Vinci because I think he's a great person to be able to be themed after. You know, he, he was really raised with nothing and then he rose up and he's, he's not only was great with technology but also with art and with, uh, you know, inventions. All those things that you, when you think of STEM or STEAM, it, it's great things. So we have novice level, apprentice level, and then protege. This, we used to call it mentor, but you know, they're still a student. The teacher is still the mentor, but a protege is a lot higher than an apprentice. Apprentice is just someone there that's maybe trying it out. And a novice is, of course, someone just, just at the beginning. So now how this works with the badges, for the requireds to get done, they really, once they have those things done, it's just a check mark in the grade book. You don't get to wear a badge that you've earned your word processing badge. You know, it's just, it doesn't really have that, that uh, uh, weight to it that way. It's, it's a required one, so you just have to get it done. So once you've proven competency in keyboarding, then you get the check mark. And, and for novice, novice is kind of the same way as well. Novice is just going to get a check mark in the grade book. Now for apprentice though, apprentice will get a badge and let's say it's uh, like, a, like a digital photography badge. So it'll have a badge with just a white badge with just a simple black icon on it. And in this case, it's a camera for digital photography. And then they can put that on their backpacks and that's what they're showing to everybody that they're an apprentice photographer. But for protege, it is actually a colored badge. So it's colored in some color. And then the actual um, uh, icon is kind of 
put onto it in reverse into white. So you'd have, uh, let's say the photography one is green. Maybe all the visual ones are going to be really great green ones or something. And then they have it on there. So when you look at the backpack, you'll be able to see because color will stand out. Oh, this student's got six colored ones or, or what have you. So that's really how the flow of that works. And in the next part of the video, I'm going to kind of break these down and show you each one of these segments. Okay, so now let me just explain how an actual badge is built in our ideas about this. The first thing we start off with, which is of course, you know, what, what badge is this? So let's, let's say it's photography. I don't think we have to call it digital photography anymore. It's just photography. Okay, then we start off with, you know, what's, what's the big idea? And uh, I don't know what my notes, but it's something like with photography, the big idea is that uh, images are powerful. They're powerful storytellers. And, and that with the right image, you can really change people's minds or you can convince people or you can do a lot of great things. So images are very uh, powerful for us visual learners. So it's going to be something like that. There's going to be a big idea about that. And then um, it's also going to have uh, some real world examples. For that, I might just show some of the great photographs from National Geographic. There's websites that feature the, you know, the photos that change the world, those type of things. So students really see, oh, there really is something about great photos. Okay, so we have a big question. And then um, we also have like a, um, sorry, yeah, big idea, then example, then big question. The big question for digital photography would be something like, what makes a photo good? So yes, this is a very simple question, but it's very deep. And so they've got to be able to answer that in the end. By the time they're a protege, they, should, they will know the answer to what makes a photo good. Uh, I want some real world um, connections to it so that they've got, uh, they've got to understand that there's uh, jobs in photography, photojournalists, uh, people take photos for blogs, people are photographers, wedding photographers, as well as a real world, not just a job, but, but since we take so many photos throughout our lives, just to know how to take photos makes you're great. I mean, it's just, you'll take photos of your kids, you'll take photos of your family, you'll take photos of your vacations, all those things. So there, there's a great real world connection there. So the kids are going, oh, there's a real purpose to why I need to learn this. Okay. So now let's take a look at, um, so this is kind of the introduction to, to a badge. And then uh, we'll, we'll look at the novice level. So the novice level is just simply uh, step by step. If you think of like a tutorial that you've used to learn a program, there is not a lot of thinking involved here. You literally are just learning the skills. You just, so with photography, you know, it's how to turn the camera on, how to, how to uh, get the card out of it, how to import photos, how to uh, compose a simple shot, uh, how to use the focus, how to use the buttons on it. Just simple step by step that takes them through. And for novice, it's probably going to be like, you know, they'll have like a portrait and then maybe a group shot that they will do of their friends and then maybe like an object shot. Just very simple things that they literally are just following step by step and that's novice. And so and we want every student to do novice of every badge. And so like I said, they get a little check mark in their grade book. But for apprentice, we want them to do, um, this is more of a fill in the blank. So now they start to have a little bit more choice in what they have. So. Uh, and, and for apprentice level, we always want to involve uh, something for the schools. So, so maybe for the apprentice level, they, um, are, are, they have assignments to take photographs of an event or they take uh, different photos that can be maybe used in the yearbook because, you know, yearbook always needs great photos or maybe it's for your school blog. They can do like a little photo journalism. So there's something that, uh, in, like I said, this is still in beta, so we still are, are deciding how this is going to work. But we know that the apprentice level um, is something that is going to benefit the school so that the school will have something out of it. And the novice level, of course, just benefits the, the child. Once they work all the way up to um, protege, then that's when they have a you know, choice of what they do. And this is when they involve the classroom teacher. So you might get to this point here and, and they've emailed it to me and I've checked them over and they're, they're ready to be published on our blog or go to the yearbook committee. But for this level here, they, they sit down with their teacher and they, they say, you know, this, I want to earn my protege digital photography badge. Is there a project coming up that I could do? And there's basically a, a letter that they give them saying, you know, these are the things that I, I would like to be able to get from this project. Here's kind of a help and guide and how the teacher can, can grade it 
when it's all done. And then the teacher can decide something like, oh, you know, I have this project coming up next uh, month that's on the Civil War, and can you think of a, a, give me an idea of what you want to do for photography on the Civil War? So then they could come back saying, well, this is what I want to do to be able to earn my protege badge, is I'm going to do these photo uh, collage or a reenactment or something like that. So this, you can see, you know, this is step by step, this is fill in the blank, this is like the freedom of choice. And each, each step they're also learning more skills, like in the apprentice level they're going to learn maybe how to take macro shots, or they're going to learn how to use uh, the camera to use filters, online filters and such. And then the protege level, they're going to then uh, really go out and do their own research to even expand their skills even further. So that's, that's how we would go through a project right there.